These days we're fundamentally trying to improve the operational effectiveness of our clients' operations uh, by implementing intelligent automation powered by AI and in a way that we call um, design for humans. But fundamentally what that is is the, uh, looking at the uh, tools that we have at our disposal today uh, but not looking at the uh, project as a technology project, but rather as a, a process reimagination project that includes the, uh, an understanding of how the people who are interacting with that process will behave and how they will feel uh, once the project is done. At this stage, the uh, clients have specifically the challenge of understanding where to start. Um, digital can be a very confusing environment. Uh, many technologies are available. Some of them are more proven than others. But also the uh, complexity resides in the organizational landscape of our clients. So, you know, fundamentally, this is not a technology challenge in itself. It's more of an organizational redesign uh, challenge. Many companies have, um, especially the large ones, have a problem with experimentation. Uh, they don't know how to do that uh, beyond the front end. Um, they also have a problem in uh, creating customer experiences that uh, are enabled by processes that cut across the front, the middle and the back end. Those um, sections of those companies very often operate in a silo and that's actually damaging to the customer experience. First and foremost, again, this is not just about technology. So it's quite important to create groups of people who are um, composed of a mix of uh, talent from certainly technology, but also from uh, uh, process transformation and, uh, and other groups also, people who understand the customer's behavior, etc. And creating um, COEs, senses of excellence, that, that allow that, uh, that to happen. Um, so that, I think, first and foremost, the, uh, the uh, main challenge and the main solution uh, resides in creating those units. I believe from what I can see and the many clients we interact with, um, the main challenge is certainly one of skills. And skills is actually a mix of talent, meaning the people you have, but also methodologies. Um, and I think both are, both are important. Uh, first of all, it's important to create groups that have diversity of um, certainly talents, um, uh, capabilities, um, coming from IT, coming from business, and bring them together, um, creating environments that uh, often are based on uh, design thinking kind of methodologies that, that kind of allow people to operate or interoperate. Uh, the other part is having an ecosystem of partners because those, the, the issue is very often the scalability of these approaches. Another key ingredient of uh, success is, again, creating the uh, right uh, capability at the right amount of scale. Um, and having a, an ecosystem of partners is a, a, a foundational component of that. Um, partners can bring scale. They can also bring, obviously, the skills that are needed, the methodologies, but they also can bring the ability to not make the same mistakes, um, having seen the experiences that they had in other similar circumstances with other clients. Clearly, the set of technologies that are most uh, important these days are related to automation. However, it's quite important to understand that automation is not just uh, robotic process automation, what is called RPA. Uh, that's certainly one of the stepping stones, but robots in themselves, um, at least the generation of robots that exist today, are not able to do a lot more than fairly uh, deterministic tasks and they're not able to perform those things. So typically the combination of artificial intelligence with uh, uh, robotics is what yields the best results in terms of the, the ability to take uh, a larger scope of work and specifically the part of the artificial intelligence that is particularly useful in automation is not necessarily what most people associate with artificial intelligence, which is the what's called computational statistics, which is the numeric part of artificial intelligence, the Watson and so forth, but rather the natural language processing, computational linguistics component, which is um, the ability of machines to understand language and make it treatable to then robots. And then at that point, robots can actually work at scale. When you think about it that way, you have a, a greater scope of intervention for automation capabilities. But also what that creates is a perfect environment whereby 
uh, you have uh, a clean demarcation of what robots can do uh, and you can rewire fundamentally you can rewire what people can do around those machines and these days you can do that with fairly lightweight dynamic type workflows uh, that are able to streamline uh, the part of the process that has not been automated uh, in a way that makes sense from a business objective standpoint. So I believe the, um, the journey to full automation and using AI for, uh, for automation uh, is going to be a multi-year, multi-generational effort. However, today, most companies can already take um, uh, the journey, undertake the journey with fairly low-end um, type of processes where the artificial intelligence, natural language understanding really mostly can already be paired up with, uh, with robotics. That's already feasible and dynamic workflow component can already be deployed. Now, the beauty of that is that that lends itself pretty well to agile type of work in which these environments can be uh, stood up in a matter of months as opposed to a matter of years. And they can also be repurposed and rearranged as the dynamics of the business change. For example, the client journeys need to be changed. Uh, people introduce new products. They want to change how they engage with end customers. And those technologies these days do lend themselves to being uh, recomposed, reconfigured um, in fairly fast, agile um, um, processes, really.